Hey everybody, my name is DJ Hoppe from the DJCoach.com. Today we're gonna go over something super important. I'm gonna give you my tips for how to properly organize your music. The first thing you need to do is develop a system. Now there's many systems that are out there. You might already have one, but today I'm gonna show you mine. So if we come over to the whiteboard, you'll be able to see that this is essentially a four step system. And we're gonna get in depth with some of these things, but I just wanna give you an overview. The first thing I'm doing is I'm downloading music from BPM Supreme. It's going into my downloads folder. Then I'm moving that music to a DJ music folder, which is my final destination. You'll notice that I have subfolders. There are these little clouds on each of them. I'll talk more about that in just a moment. And then after that, I'm dragging them into my DJ software. This is very important so that no files get lost. And again, we'll talk more about this in just a moment. And then last but not least, I need to organize these files. So once they're inside of Serato, Rekordbox, Tractor, whatever you're using, now I'm going in, I'm setting hot cues, I'm writing tags, I'm doing all of that organization inside of the software. Before we start downloading, I wanna make sure that you check on a couple of settings. So I wanna go into Chrome and also into Safari. Uh, depending on which one you use, I'm gonna to go to settings. And the way I got there is here, right? Which is also command comma, we'll bring up settings. That's a good shortcut to just know overall. If you scroll down to advanced, you'll see this right here. This is the location that your songs are downloading into. So when you're downloading songs from BPM Supreme, they're gonna go to whatever folder you select. So you can change this as well. I'm gonna keep it going into downloads because I like it there. Um, and then same thing with Safari, except for with Safari, I want you to check one more thing. So with Safari, you'll also see this. File download location, so it's going to downloads. And then this right here, make sure that this is unchecked. Do you ever have that where you're downloading songs and then it keeps opening up in iTunes like as you download them? That's because this is checked on. So I know somebody right now took a huge sigh and there was a big light bulb that went off with somebody who's just watching this. Make sure to uncheck this. This is a Safari issue. Um, and I do wanna show you one more thing in iTunes, but we'll get to that in just a moment. So let's go into BPM Supreme. Let's download some tracks. So as I'm downloading music from BPM Supreme, I wanted to show you something that I don't know if you knew about, you might have already, but these little three dots right here, if I go ahead and click on them, they bring up some other options. So I will see that I can click on this to play, which you probably already know, or you can hit this, which would download, or I can hit the plus sign. And what the plus sign will do is it'll add it to my crate. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit both of those and they'll add it to my crate, which is up here in the top right hand corner. So then what I can do after that is I can batch download. So when I come over here, I see all my 42 tracks that I want and I can hit download batch. Now, the nice thing that I like about adding it to the crate is you can also do this on the mobile app. So sometimes I'm on the go and I'm listening to songs and I'm just hitting plus, 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 and it's all going into my crate. So then when I get to my computer, I can just come over here and batch download. So I'm gonna go ahead and download the batch and they're gonna download as a zip file. So I've gone ahead and unzipped this file. You'll see all of my songs that are right here. Um, I'm going to make another window. So inside of Finder, I'm gonna hit Command N. That'll make a new window here. I'm gonna to go to Dropbox. In Dropbox, I have this DJ music folder. Inside of this DJ music folder, I've made a folder for this date. So here's this date. I'm gonna take all of these, select all, Command A would be to select all. And then I'm gonna drag these over and place them here. So it's actually moving the files. I'm not copying the files, I'm moving the files. So they're no longer here in this folder and now I can delete that if I want and that's out of my downloads. So here are my songs. And you'll notice something is happening. In fact, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see. Do you see that there are green check marks that are being made? Well, these songs right now, as this is happening live, are being uploaded to Dropbox. And I wanna break this down because this is an important part of my process. And that was something that I was referring to earlier with the little blue cloud. I am using Dropbox as my central location so that all of my files continuously are backed up and kept in sync with any of my other computers. Let me explain real quick. This is one of the biggest discoveries that I've made in my entire career of DJing, which is using Dropbox as a way to not only 
sync between multiple devices, but to also keep a very much real time backup. So let me show you how this works because there's a lot of misconceptions about this. The way I'm using Dropbox, I have all of my music inside of Dropbox. And what I've done is I'm using selective sync um, and now they've sort of changed some of the language from online only and local. So I'm using selective sync to have certain files on my laptop, the access to all files on my mobile device, on my phone, and then also just having every file on my desktop. And depending on how you want this configured, if you have two laptops, three laptops, if you've got a, a studio computer, you can use this however you wish. But using this as selective sync, make sure that there's one copy of the file and that it's always up to date. So if I make any changes on my laptop and I connect to the Wi-Fi, as soon as I get to my desktop, all of those changes are already there. Now, this is especially true in a program like Serato where it is taking the hot cues and storing that information to the MP3 tag. So you might notice this too, when you download a track from BPM Supreme and maybe there's already hot cues on it or already a flip attached to it, it's because Serato is storing that information to the MP3. So now my third step in the process, I'm going to take my folder and I'm gonna drag it into the playlist area or the crate area inside of Serato. So here it is, and now everything is there. Before we move on to our fourth step, let's clean up this crate a little bit. So if we come over here, you'll notice that my album column, I don't need this, I'm not really using it. It's blank in there. Same thing with length and common, I'm not really using those right now. So let's go in and figure out what we wanna use. If we come on over here to the far right-hand side, we'll see this little triangle, and I can deselect and select what I wanna keep here. So we'll keep the length. I'll get rid of the plays, I don't need that. By the way, if you ever wanna know where the location is, you can always click on that and you'll be able to see where it is as well. Now this is a great indicator for me that everything is inside of Dropbox. I wanna make sure of that. Um, all right, so when we come back over here, I can also rearrange the columns. So I like to have my BPM here. I like to have my key right next to it. Um, there we go, that looks much better. Um, we're good like that. Now I wanna show you this as well. So if I come over to my settings, we have the ability here in settings, when I go to library and display, to custom crate columns. If I select this, what this will mean is that all of the changes that I just made in terms of selecting what I would see here and what I moved over, if I make a new crate, inside of this new crate, I could change this up and maybe put the genre and put the album and that won't affect this crate, right? So each crate that you make can have different columns. This is a great feature if you're wanting to create a set, maybe you're recording a mix, you want songs in a particular order, so you wanna sort by the number column. And then in another crate, you wanna sort by BPM. In another crate, maybe you wanna sort by genre. So this is a great feature to have selected on. Now, one more thing I wanna show you is I can sort by BPM or I can sort by key or by song, by any of these um, columns, but I can also sort by two columns at the same time. So if I hold command and then hit the click, I'm now sorting by BPM and key at the same time. So it's looking at both of them and it's sorting BPM first and then key which is great, especially if you've got a huge library, you'll be able to see BPM and key at the same time. Now, the other thing I wanna point out is all of these songs, because I've gotten them from BPM Supreme are already analyzed, so you'll see the BPM and the key. Some of the songs that you may have, this may be a blank space, so you're gonna to need to analyze your files. So instead of just hitting analyze files, you can always just drag one song onto analyze files and it'll just do that one track. So when I go in and set tags, I've gone ahead and done this to three tracks already, um, and I want you to see how I've done this. So in my comment field, I'm writing what the intro is, how to get out of the song, so what the in and what the out is. I've got a whole other video that we've done around how to break down song structure and what to do with hot cue strategy. So you'll even be able to see here, um, using that same thought process, I've gone in and I've set all my hot cues. Like I said, there's a full video on this as well that I want you to check out if you're interested. And now that I've done that, I've also filled in this other field called grouping. So I added in a grouping field. 
And this is just one of those fields that was here inside of Serato that I wasn't really using. So I opened this up and I started to write notes on it. And the reason why I'm showing you this is because we can allow the software to really work for us by using smart crates. So I want to show you this. If we come on over here to the um, top left hand corner, you'll notice that here's where I make a crate. Here's where I make a smart crate and it's colored blue. So let's go ahead and start a smart crate and you'll notice that it has rules. So I can create rules here. Let's add a rule and let's say uh, everything that grouping contains chill. And I'm going to hit save. So now when I come on over to my crate, I can rename this crate chill. And this is automatically pulling in these two files because the grouping labeled them as chill. So you'll notice I wrote some things, just some notes on the track that I want to know. And I'm going to use my smart crates to be able to help organize my library. Now, the really great thing about this is as I bring in new files, it will organize that. So I could even start to make smart crates that let's say I made a smart crate where the let me zoom in for you. Let's say where the uh, song contains clean. So this would be for all clean music, right? Anything that was not dirty and had explicit lyrics. Well, there we go. So out of that crate that I pulled in, here's the ones that were clean. And I, now I can call this clean. Now you should note that I can't make sub crates with smart crates. And I'm going to show you what a sub crate is here in just a moment. So let's say, let's go back to my original crate. Let's sort it by BPM. And let's say that these were all songs that were, that I was going to play on a particular night. Well, what I could do is I could start to make a smart crate, do that as a sub crate. And I could say that this is everything that is um, 120 plus BPM wise. So in here, I could take anything that was 120 beats per minute and greater. And I could move this into this sub crate. So when I'm here in the sub crate, all I'm going to see is everything that's 120 plus. But when I'm here in the main crate, I'm going to see everything. Now you'll also notice that when I'm here in the main crate, everything that's in the sub crate then is sort of got this gray overlay on top of it. And that's how I know that that's in the sub crate. So here's my setup of what I like to do. What I like to do is to create smart crates and use this as my main form of organization. And I'll tag my tracks and allow this to pull into as many different crates as possible. So you'll also notice inside of my chill crate, I had a song that was clean. So this first one was also clean and you'll notice that it's in both. So this track is actually in both of these playlists and I didn't have to physically put it into both of those crates. It did it automatically. So I'm really allowing Serato to work for me. Now you can also create more than one parameter for a smart crate. So inside of this, um, I can create more than one parameter. So I could say, let's say everything that is BPM is greater than or equal to a hundred and BPM that is less than or equal to 120. And I'm going to match all of the following rules. I can also add something else where I could say song contains clean save. So now let's see what that pulled up. Well, there we go. So these are all the songs that I have in my library right now that are between 100 and 120 and that are also clean. Great way to stay organized. If I want to delete a crate, all I need to do is hit command and delete and it will delete the crate out smart crate or a um, or a regular crate either way. I want to show you how Dropbox is working and is keeping everything in sync. So check this out. If I were to go to hurting and let's say I set one more hot cue here, I'm just going to set a hot cue there or there. I've got quantize on. Okay. So that's good. And now I eject this. It's going to write the file. So now that it's writing the file, see that on the bottom, it was writing the file and check this out. The last thing that it did was update update that file. And that's because I'm connected to the Wi-Fi right now. Now, if I wasn't connected to the Wi-Fi, as soon as I connected to the Wi-Fi, it would update the file and then everything would be good. So if I go and check on my desktop right now, that hot queue that I just set is there, which is incredible. This is one of the reasons why I wanted to teach this process 
and why I want you to consider using Dropbox as a great tool for keeping things in sync and also keeping things backed up. Now I wanna give you something that people always ask me about. And I gotta credit my man Matt, AKA Cut Corners from Serato for putting me up on this. It is adding emojis to your playlist. And it makes a big difference. I know it sounds really silly, but it really makes a big difference. So let me show you how to do this. I'm gonna open up text edit. And I've already gone ahead and set a couple emojis here. And the way that I did that was I go over to edit, right here, emojis and symbols, click on that. And this will bring up emojis and you can now add them into this text file. So now what I can do is I could take this star, copy, command C, come on over to my playlist here and hit command V. And now here it is, a little star with clean. Now you can start to go crazy with these as well. And let's see, command V ahead of it. You can start to do stuff like this, that you can have more space between things. So. I personally think that it stands out a lot more for me when I see something like that. And I know it's silly and it's small, but really organization is about being able to find the song that you need when you need it. So that you're not just looking at this sea of music, right? Like separating these things into smaller crates, um, having different distinctions will help you perform better. And that's why this is so important. One more thing I wanna show you inside of iTunes, I'm gonna open this up. I'm gonna drop this down, I'm gonna go to Preferences. Inside of Preferences, I'm gonna click on Advanced. Now inside of Advanced, we wanna make sure that this right here, copy files to iTunes media folder when adding to library. Let's make sure that that is unchecked. We do not want that checked. What that will do is that will make an extra copy of the file. So for some of you who had the Safari checked on to already open up, it was probably opening up inside of iTunes, as soon as that happened, it made a copy of that file. So you have the one that is in downloads, and then you also have one that's probably stored inside of your iTunes media folder. So it's a good idea to double check that because if you have two files, that means that that's just taking up more space on your hard drive. And in addition to that, when you're making tags to one of them, you're not to the other. And it will start to get really, really confusing. So make sure to uncheck that inside of iTunes and also that setting inside of Safari. I hope this was helpful for you. My name is DJ Hopper from the DJCoach.com. I'll see y'all next time.